Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today I'm super excited to set up my bullet journal for November with a very autumnal theme. Where I live, the trees have lost most of their leaves and it's getting colder and colder by the day. It really feels like we're on the cusp of winter and that just really made me want to hold on to autumn for just a little bit longer. So this theme ended up being sort of an ode to autumn. I'm starting by cutting my tabs for my weeklies just so that all of the pages are prepped and ready to go. And then I'm flipping back to my cover page and putting down some washi tape so I can get nice crisp lines for this cover page painting. using my Winsor & Newton designer's gouache paints as I usually do. Starting off with zinc white, lamp black, and burnt umber, and a clean wet brush to mix a slightly off white. I wanted it to be sort of a soft, misty background for this painting, using mostly white with a tiny, tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of brown, just to get a slight misty, smoky, creamy color. And I'm gonna use this color as a base for the top half of the painting and for a base on the bottom half where a pathway or a road is gonna be. Once that first layer was dry, I mixed a slightly darker version of this color to use to paint some trees in the distance that in the end you'll barely be able to see, but they just add a little bit more detail to the background of the painting. And they're meant to look far away, sort of misty in the distance. So just painting some really loose shapes for trees and branches and then leaves and starting just with this sort of slightly darker tan color and then mixing a little bit of orange with that tan for the leaves so that they have a little bit of a warmer look while still being sort of light and washed out. I'm also adding some splotchy areas down towards where the ground is to look like bushes and just lower sort of trees and things in the background. I just wanna get a base in for the ground at the bottom. So I'm just using a lighter brown to get that filled in. And then I'm using a darker brown to paint the trunks of the trees and the branches for all of the trees that are in the foreground. This painting was based on a photograph that I found on Pinterest which was much harder to recreate in painting form than I expected when I started. This painting took me quite a while. Just like I always say when I do a painting on my channel, I am not an expert, I'm self-taught, and I don't paint that often outside of my bullet journal setup videos. Pretty much any time I am filming myself painting is pretty much the only time I am painting because in my free time, I like to do some of my other hobbies that aren't work related over doing something that I heavily associate with work at this point, like painting. So pretty much every time I'm doing a painting in my bullet journal, it's me sort of relearning how to paint and trying to figure out how to do what I'm trying to do and trying to learn new techniques and figure out how to paint things that I maybe haven't ever tried to paint or maybe just haven't tried to paint for a long while. So I'm always just figuring it out as I go. 
I wanted to add a little bit more detail to the road in the foreground. So I'm adding a slightly darker gray to the center of the road and also to the edges. This is gonna get many more layers as this painting goes on to add more detail to it, but I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more like gravel, add some more shaded areas where it looks like maybe the trees have cast a shadow across the road and just get it a little bit messier and more organic looking. I wanted to get started on the leaves as well, so I'm picking up an orange paint, just adding orange splotches all over the place to the leaves on the trees and all over the ground. I will keep adding more and more details as we go on, but this is sort of the initial leaf layer. While we wait for that layer of the painting to dry, it's a perfect opportunity to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Casetify. Thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this video. I've actually been using Casetify cases for several years now, and I love the way they use slim and sleek design with cases that aren't bulky at all, really easily slide into your pocket while still having incredible five times the military standard protection. These Casetify cases protect your phone from drops of up to 11 and a half feet, which is honestly a necessity if you're as clumsy as I am. <laughs> because I'm constantly flinging my phone across the room completely unintentionally. When you have a case to fight case on your phone, your phone will just harmlessly bounce away with no damage whatsoever, which is amazing. I tossed my phone with this case on it about eight times. And other than a little bit of dust on the corners, it looked brand new. Casetify's latest protection technology, EcoShock, provides 20% more protection, so drops like this won't even phase you. Casetify has so many prints to choose from and lots of options for customization, so your case can perfectly fit your aesthetic. I custom designed this black on black, sort of witchy self-affirmation case for myself, and I really love how it turned out. Casetify also has curated accessories like lens and screen protectors and iPhone straps to complete your look. Not only are Casetify cases good looking, but they're also sustainable. Their new iPhone 14 Impact series is made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. They're even partially made from upcycled phone cases, all part of their re program, giving new life to post-consumer waste. Make sure to go to casetify.com slash plant-based bride today to get 15% off your order. Thank you again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Now that I have my orange layer in and that's completely dry, I wanted to add some green into this painting because even though this is supposed to be representative of late autumn, I feel like there's still some green around even at this time of year. So I mix some orange with my green to get a really warm toned green to add to the ground and to some of the lower areas of the painting. I'm also adding a wider and darker gray border to the road and even more details to the center of the road, trying to give it more of a messy, almost gravel-like effect. I also wanted to add some more depth and dimension to my tree trunks because now that there's a lot more color in this painting, I felt like the trees themselves were sort of blending into the rest and not really standing out. So I'm mixing black with my dark brown to add shadows and some more detailed lines to the trunks of the trees and some of the branches just to give more contrast and so they sort of stand out from the background a little bit more. I also wanted to add some darker rusty orange to this painting. So again, going through, just going in, adding this color all over the place. I felt like the contrast between the road and the rest of the ground was a little too intense. So I added some dark brown between the dark gray and the rest of the ground to sort of soften that transition. I 
I wanted to add some branches in the foreground as sort of a framing device for the painting. So I'm using dark brown mixed with black to get this almost black, really dark color to paint some branches just in the top corners here to add that sort of almost vignette effect to the painting and give it a little bit more depth. I also added some orange and rusty red to the road to make it look like some leaves had fallen onto the road as well. And used a little bit of brown to add a little bit of shadow and dimension to some of the leaves on the trees. Again, just to make them stand out a little bit more and add a little bit more detail and contrast. The cover page painting is finished, but I need to leave it to dry for a while. So moving over to the next page, which is going to be my calendar, keeping it super, super simple as I often do with my calendars. This calendar is all about practicality, but I am adding just a little highlight with my beige Tombow underneath the calendar lines, just to add the tiny bit of color, tiny bit of interest, super quick and easy. And it kind of matches the color that I painted at my first weekly tab. So it just felt perfect. Removing the washi tape from my painting and from my tab and we can see how it turned out. I can definitely see areas where I would have made different choices if I were to redo this painting, see areas that I definitely can improve in my painting skills, but I spent a long time on this painting and I am happy with how it turned out, even though it isn't perfect because, I mean, perfection doesn't exist anyway. making my way through my weeklies, painting all of the tabs, just using colors that I used in that initial painting to tie everything together. And Yoda decided I had been filming for far too long and not paying attention to her nearly enough. So she came for a visit, needing as many scratches as possible and trying to get her tail in my wet paint. Once I finished painting my tabs, I flipped back to my first weekly and I decided to create some branches along the top. This is, I guess, pretty similar to those final branches I painted on my cover painting, that sort of upper corner framing device. So really, really dark brown for these trees coming in on either side. And then I'll be going back in and adding leaves. I'm continuing to use my stamps on my weeklies, just like I did on my calendar. Just a really quick way to get a little bit of a vintage, cozy vibe without having to take ages on lettering. And you might've noticed I'm doing two page weeklies this month instead of my regular faux Dutch door rolling weekly. This is just a safe space because as per usual, as I near the end of the year, I start getting pretty close to running out of pages and I wanna make sure I have enough pages to fit December in this notebook. So I'm trying to be conservative on the page usage. So two page weeklies for November and December. If you're unfamiliar with the Rolling Weekly and want to learn more about it, I'll link my video explaining what it is and how I use it so you can check that out. using my beige Tombow again, just to highlight those daily boxes, just for that little bit of interest and to tie it in with the calendar.
The last step is adding a bunch of leaves to these trees here on my weeklies, just using all the same colors I did in my cover page painting. So light orange, a darker rusty reddish orange, brown, and a really warm toned green. And I'm adding those leaves not only to the branches and a couple that have just fallen from the branches and are sort of floating <laughs> as they and are beginning to fall, but also several leaves that are falling down on the weeklies themselves. So that is it for this pretty simple autumnal theme. I hope you enjoyed this one. Other than the cover page painting, which took me several hours to finish, this is very simple, very easy to make, and yeah, just an ode to my favorite season that I am not ready to say goodbye to just yet. Thank you again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to go to casetify.com slash plantbasedbride today to get 15% off your order. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Idona, Leanne, Judy, Maya, and Megan. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad and want to get some printables from this month's setup, be sure to join with the link in the description box. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I set up my bullet journal for November. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and leave some sort of autumnal emoji in the comments so I know you made it all the way to the end. Until next time. Bye friends.